Lessons from Microsoft and History Microsoft Corporation is a place of legends. Harvard dropout Bill Gates and his cohorts parlay their passion for computer programming, a lot of hard work, a fortuitous misstep by IBM, and a little luck into the world's largest software producer. They made wealth the old-fashioned way, they produced something of value, took it to market, and the market responded. As Microsoft grew, so did the scrutiny of their business practices not just from competitors and the press, but also from government regulators. In 1990, the Federal Trade Commission started an investigation into the relationship between Microsoft and IBM Corporation. Four things simmered along for a few years with no huge push from regulators. The earlier issue ended in a consent decree and there was a Justice Department denial of a proposed acquisition, Intuit Corporation, but other than those and similar bumps in the road, the company focused on its core competencies and strove to stay ahead of its competition in the marketplace. Then, in 1997, the Department of Justice initiated full-blown antitrust proceedings against Microsoft. In 2000, it was found guilty and the order was issued to break Microsoft into two companies. Though the breakup order was reversed on appeal and eventually things got settled by late 2002, the cost of defending themselves was huge. Further, it never was clear that Microsoft had done anything wrong other than try to compete in the marketplace by building a better mousetrap, or, in this case, software. Professor Ben Klein of UCLA carefully analyzed all of the charges and arguments against Microsoft and was able to demonstrate that virtually all of Microsoft's alleged missteps were perfectly consistent with competitive behavior. Five. What is interesting about this Microsoft example is not what went on in the trial, but rather something else. The Center for Responsive Politics was founded in 1983 by two U.S. senators with the goal of tracking money in politics and, showing, its effect on elections and public policy. 6. The Center publishes its information on its OpenSecrets.org website. Its information on the political contributions of Microsoft Corporation includes the following. Prior to 1998, the company and its employees gave virtually nothing in terms of political contributions. But when the Justice Department launched an antitrust investigation into the company's marketing of its popular Windows software, things changed. The company opened a Washington lobbying office, founded a political action committee and soon became one of the most generous political givers in the country. Seven. Microsoft's political contributions in 1990 were a grand total of $3,800, divided among five candidates, all but one of whom were part of the Washington State Congressional Delegation. That grew to a total of $251,474 for the 1996 election cycle. Then in 1998, the amount jumped to $1,366,821 and hit $4,628,893 in 2000. Amounts have ranged from $2 million to over $4 million in each two-year election cycle since 2008. In addition, lobbying efforts, which had been limited prior to 1998, jumped to almost $4 million in 1998 and hovered between $8.50 and $9.5 million each year from 2003 through 2008. In 2009 and 2010, the lobbying expenditure hovered between $6.70 and $6.9 million, presumably due to the recession. 9. The coincidental occurrence of the Justice Department's antitrust lawsuit and Microsoft's decision to enter the political fray is telling. Some, who choose not to speak for attribution, opine that the Justice Department suit was a wake-up call to the company for not paying proper attention to rendering unto Caesar. Whatever the reason, one thing is clear. Microsoft discovered that its success depended on both how it competed in the marketplace as well as how it competed in the political arena. 
in contrast to how Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates is managing his personal fortune, the corporate entity Microsoft is not, and never was, in business to spend millions on charity or goodwill. Those lobbying efforts are at a very minimum designed to fend off challenges that emanate from politically inspired changes in the ground rules. More likely would be the situation where Microsoft has discovered that it sometimes can be easier to beat the competition through political means than it is to meet them head-on in the marketplace. The art of using government to mold the playing field in one's favor is nothing new and is quite ubiquitous. A visit to a hearing of a local government board that is deciding whether or not to grant a liquor license often reveals that those speaking most fervently against approval are those who have been lined up and orchestrated by someone who already holds a liquor license and would face additional competition if the new license were approved. In Billings, Montana, each of the two hospitals separately and independently saw fit to petition the city to abandon a block of city streets so the hospitals could expand. Each hospital wished to acquire a separate block, three blocks apart, of the same street that would primarily adversely impact access to their own emergency rooms. But at the hearings, each hospital rose in opposition to allowing the other to acquire the rights to the street because of claimed blockage of access to their emergency room three blocks away. 